Hello, fellow Tarnished. Hello, Elden Ringers. I'm back. I thought the last video showcasing tricks and hidden mechanics would be a one-off, but it turns out there was still a lot to cover. And shout out to the suggestions you all left, since a lot of these new ones come directly from you. Just like last time, there will be very few spoilers, and I'm trying to mostly include things that the game doesn't explicitly tell you, along with a couple easy-to-miss features. Let's do it. First up, did you know that the weather can actually affect your damage? Yep, turns out that if it's raining, you'll do less fire damage and more lightning damage. This is obviously very minor, but it makes sense and is a cool detail. Speaking of lightning, if you cast a spell or use a weapon art that results in a bolt of lightning hitting some water, it'll expand out into a mini circle of damage. This splash damage is rather low, but it can sort of work with groups of enemies, so it's worth keeping in mind. Charged attack dodge canceling. With curved swords and thrusting swords, if you tap dodge while charging a heavy attack, you'll do a flip or back set move that can be used to avoid attack while also damaging the enemy at the same time. This is incredibly useful as a PvP mix-up tool, as well as a way to save yourself from a charge attack you shouldn't have committed to. There was a similar move in past games, but the input for doing it was changed, so I'm gonna bet even Souls veterans may have missed that this still exists. On the topic of thrusting swords, both normal and heavy thrusting swords have a two-hit strong attack combo while on horseback. This can be surprisingly useful, and it's interesting because it seems that no other weapon types have any sort of strong attack combos for horseback. One more tip for thrusting weapons, you can actually block while while attacking with thrusting swords and spears. You just hold block while pressing light attack. This has been a thing since Demon Souls, but it's easy to miss if you're new or don't typically use these weapons. Jumping. It's not just for exploring. It's good to remember that you can dodge over a variety of attacks that are low to the ground if you time your jump correctly. On top of that, if enemies or bosses do earthquake type moves, you can completely avoid damage by just jumping over them. Very useful and feels so much more satisfying than landing a normal dodge. Crouch attacks. Every weapon has a unique stealth attack when you light attack while crouching. Most people probably miss this because you typically only use crouching for backstabs, but this crouch attack can actually be very useful. Across weapon types, this move tends to be quicker than a normal light attack. The Colossal Sword weapon class especially has a super quick crouch attack with extra reach and it's perfect for finishing enemies off. Next, sometimes it's better to go for a charged strong attack instead of just a backstab when sneaking up on an enemy. This allows you to get the full damage of the R2 attack in addition to the backstab if you stagger the enemy. This will usually only reliably work on smaller humanoid enemies, but when health pools get larger further into the game, this can make a difference. Item Pouch. This is essential, and yet I've seen so many people completely ignore this feature. You can assign four items to your item pouch from the top right side of your screen when opening the menu. This allows you to have access to them whenever you hold triangle or Y on the controller without needing to cycle through everything on your D-pad. If you haven't already, please assign your horse to one of these along with the lantern you get later on to another. Both of these make exploring much smoother. Ladder Drops. Last time, I mentioned how you can do actions like attacking and healing on a ladder, but I forgot to mention that you can also drop off ladders by tapping the dodge button. This is perfect for catching enemies beneath you with a plunging attack, so keep it in mind. Roll and jump staggers. Whenever you're fighting weak, human-sized enemies, you can usually stagger them with a roll or jump despite doing no damage in the process. This is easy to not notice, but it's especially useful for escaping if you find yourself surrounded by weak enemies. Or, you know, if you just want to bully them. Horse jump attacks. I'm sure everyone knows that you can do mid-air attacks on horseback if you just do a light attack after jumping, but this doesn't work for strong attacks. However, if you begin charging the strong attack before the jump, it turns out that mid-air strong attacks are a thing. Definitely worth keeping in mind for flying enemies. Next, have you ever noticed gold leaves falling down from the sky at night? This only happens sometimes, but it provides a slight buff to the amount of runes you'll get per kill. Kinda neat. Bow attacks. Did you know that your bow can be used while jumping or right after rolling? Both of these attacks are noticeably faster than just firing while standing, and are great to keep in mind for close combat or bow-only runs. Exploding Stone Guys In the mines, you can often find these stone enemies with packs of bombs on their backs. If you hit them with a fire attack, they'll explode. These enemies weren't difficult to begin with, but explosions are fun, so try it out. Quick Stepping Every now and then, you'll find yourself in an area that forces you to move slowly, like, for example, lava zones. This can be annoying, but if you just equip a dagger, you can use its quick step weapon art and move so much faster by just repeatedly tapping L2. For everyone who didn't play Dark Souls 3, you're welcome. Attacking through walls. Usually when you attack a wall, your weapon will just bounce off of it. However, if you do a jumping attack, that won't happen. And if you combine that with a weapon like the lance or the whip, suddenly you can easily and safely hit enemies through walls. Remember, in FromSoft games, a win is a win. Use every tool that you have. 
Next, whenever you're blocking, your stamina will recover at a much lower speed. I know most people probably knew this, but I see new players who rely a bit too much on their shields do this constantly, so I just wanted to get the info out there. Speaking of shields, here's a reminder that two-handing your shield is an option. And not only is it an option, it's a very good one. Here's some footage of me fighting the Tree Sentinel on a low-level character with 13 endurance and an unupgraded shield. Your stability is much higher while two-handing a shield, and essentially that means that you'll lose less stamina for each attack that you block. Not only that, but guard counters still work too. Fighting the Tree Sentinel like this was kind of a cakewalk, and I think playing the entire game like this might actually be viable. Imp statues. Inside of catacombs, you'll sometimes find these fire-breathing imp statues. However, you can actually hit them to lower them. Not only that, but this also works from far away if you shoot an arrow at them. And if you jump next to one, the jump will also activate it to go back up, so you can easily ride to the top. Poison. Last time I mentioned that if you roll around in poison, you'll get covered in it and your poison meter will continue going up even after you're no longer standing in the goo. Some people commented saying that you could take off your armor to stop the buildup when this happens, though I found that this unfortunately doesn't work. Work. But what does work is just using the soap item. This is good to remember not only for the game, but for real life too. Please take showers. Please. One more poison trick. You can stand on breakable objects to let your poison meter drain back down. I mentioned in the last video that as long as you initiate your jump far enough away, you'll be able to stand on these objects without breaking them. But I hadn't considered that this would also be perfect for avoiding poison until some of you commented about it. So thanks. Next, I didn't include this last time because I thought most people knew it, but I think a lot of people don't know, so here you go. You can switch between your right and left hand weapons while on horseback by doing the two-handed input. So for PlayStation, that would be triangle plus R1 or L1. So for example, with this you can freely swap between your sword and your catalyst for casting magic. Attacking near ledges. Whenever you attack, your character typically moves forward in the process. This can be a little nerve-wracking if you find yourself near a ledge, but it turns out that the game prevents you from falling off in this way. Do keep in mind though that this doesn't seem to work for ledges with falls that won't kill you, so still be mindful about falling off near them. Backstepping. Backstepping can be done by just tapping the dodge button. What you might not have known is that this time, blocking can actually be maintained while backstepping. So if you're holding block, you just tap the dodge button and you'll keep blocking. This is actually really cool and potentially really useful. Barricade shield. This is a weapon art you can apply to most shields. Last time I mentioned how great shields will cause enemy attacks to bounce off more frequently, but it turns out that using the barricade shield skill has the same effect. Not only that, but activating it functions as a block too, so you can sort of time it like a block counter from Monster Hunter. Crouching while sprinting. This is a strange one. If you're running during combat and your stamina gets low, you can quickly crouch and then uncrouch to recover a good amount of stamina without really losing any speed. This seems to work because there's a window of time where your stamina keeps going back up even after you've started running again. I'm not sure I'd personally ever remember to do this during a boss fight, but it seems potentially useful. Double drinking. This has been a thing since Dark Souls, but I'm sure not everyone takes advantage of this properly. I'll sometimes see new players lose enough health to where they need to heal twice to get back to full. What they'll do is heal once, pause, and then heal again. In the heat of a boss fight, this might be too slow. So instead, just tap the heal button a second time immediately after the first heal finishes. This second heal will come out much faster. Stance break critical hits. Whenever you break the stance of an enemy or boss, you can get a critical hit on them. But what you may not have noticed is that you can backstab some of them during this moment as well. However, landing a critical hit from the back instead of the front seems to do less damage. So avoid this if possible. Lastly, make sure to look at your map for points of interest. For example, every mine in the game is clearly marked with a little orange circle and dark center. This makes makes finding upgrade materials pretty convenient since there's always loads of them inside of mines. If you're struggling with the game, I suggest seeking these mines out. You can reach most of them without ever needing to kill a single boss, and most of your damage comes from weapon upgrades, not stats. But yeah, I think that's it. I hope you learned a few things, and if you didn't, I'm sorry I guess. I have some plans for future Elden Ring videos, but as always, I also appreciate any suggestions you all might have, so feel free to leave them. Thanks for watching, and take it easy.